Hey y'all, welcome back to Dilly Diabetics. My name is Noelle and this week we are doing the theme of things only type 1 diabetics understand. So without further ado, we'll get in today's video, into today's video. Um, first and foremost, I am old school. I am on finger pokes and shots. Um, don't have Dexcom waiting for that to come, but it's a nice break and I probably won't put it on right away. And I'm just tired of pumping. So I feel like I have more freedom on MDI, but without further ado, oh, and my blood sugar was just 180. I didn't really think to check it when I was filming and I just really don't want to finger poke again. So without further ado, let's jump into today's two, two days video oh my gosh all right so um first on my list we're going to talk about low blood sugar shakes um and low blood sugar feelings in general um so with that it's really hard to understand low blood sugar unless if you have it um for me i get shaky sweaty cold clammy um, my tongue goes numb, my lips go numb, um, I feel all the color drain out of me, and I get really dizzy, um, shaky, I don't remember if I said that, and it's just something undescribable, and unless if someone actually has a low blood sugar, or deals with low blood sugar in general, um, they're not really going to understand that, um, along with the low blood sugar shakes is the blood sugar high sick feeling or high blood sugar sick feeling um and that usually happens for me once i get like 250 um i start to get like nauseous and really foggy brained um in my past i spent so many years with high blood sugars um i was so lethargic and tired and just like a zombie all the time so now I start being that way when I'm in the 200s because I got myself in um, pretty decent control. Um, so the blood sugar, you know, high, sick feeling along with the um, excessive thirst and having to pee every 20 minutes, um, that's pretty intense um, and it's not fun. Um, so that's something I think only diabetics can understand as well. Also, with that being said, the whole, my grandma, my grandpa, my uncle, my cousin, um, whoever has diabetes, but that person doesn't, and they try to tell you that they understand and they get it, the thing is, they don't get it, you don't get it, until you deal with it every day, like I have for 17 years, you don't know the highs and the lows and the painful, you know, injections and finger pokes and you don't know the triumphs. You don't know that. You can be there to support um, and that's great to have, but until you personally deal with it, don't be like, I totally get it. I know how you feel. Be like, okay, I'm here to support you. What do you need me to do? I think that's more important to have a good support system than having someone say that they completely understand what you're going through if they don't. Um, going kind of along with that, um, something only type ones understand is, you know, a painful finger poke. When you're poking your own finger, whether you're on the Dexcom G6 where you don't have to check your blood sugar or your fingers are just so tired and worn out and it goes in really deep and it hurts for 20 minutes after. Um, that's something only diabetics, diabetics can understand. Um, whether you go to the doctor and they do it just for, you know, measure, pre-measure, checking out, okay. But we deal with that every time. I know when I'm not on Dexcom, I check my blood sugar 10 to 15 times a day. So I get plenty of the painful finger pokes. Um, so when someone goes to the doctor and they complain about it for one poke once a year or every 16 million years, I don't want to hear it. Um, something diabetics also only understand is when you say, I'm going to bottom out. 
Um, a lot of people are like, what does that even mean? Some people are like, oh, that deals with cars. No, that means you took a lot of insulin or too much insulin, um, over bolus, over corrected, and your blood sugar is going to drop excessively quick, I guess, or when you're plummeting, you're dropping incredibly fast. Um, you're going down and there's no end in sight. Um, I guess that's how I describe it. Um, another thing only type ones or someone's hypo understands is going low right before bed. Right when you're in that sleepy point and you're ready to go to bed and lay your head down and get some good Z's. Um, your blood sugar goes low, your dick's calm goes off, you start to get that low feeling. And then you have to stay up for another 15 to 20 minutes to make sure your blood sugar comes up after you have a snack, a juice box, make a PB&J, or what have you. And then you're up, because then you're not tired anymore because you just ate or had something to drink that was cold and it kind of reawoken those senses. Along with that, um, when you're doing a pump site change or giving an insulin injection and you go to say dial your pen like this and I have plenty of insulin left in here I have over 60 units but say it was low and you dial it up and you had only had four units left and you needed like eight units that's really annoying to either have to break out a new pen or draw out the insulin with a syringe. Um, that's one thing I always do with these is there's always a little bit left in there. There's always 10 to 15 units extra that I draw out with a syringe because um, we don't waste insulin in Wisconsin. Um, or when you're doing a pump reservoir and you try to use what's left in a vial or pen and there's less than the dose you need whatever, if it's 100 units, 150, 200, 250, 300, and then you have to combine insulin, that's always sucky and annoying. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, and then for me, this is something that's personal to me. Um, this is why I've kind of backed off the Instagram. Um, but diabetes extremists. Um, there's a difference to me between someone who keeps himself in check, eats healthy, exercises, and does right by them. But then there's the ones that don't allow for mistakes in their diabetes or bad diabetes days. And if they have a blood sugar that's out of their range, um, it ruins their whole day. It gets them down. They're like, oh, I'm terrible at diabetes. I don't do well with that because you know what life happens you can't control everything like I had a bad vial of insulin and it threw me into DKA like a month and a half ago and there wasn't anything bad I can or anything good I can do to help myself other than give myself a correction because it just was what it was I'm someone who allows for mistake and by far, I'm not a perfect diabetic. Like, my blood sugars can be anywhere from 50 to, like, 400. I haven't had a 400 in a while, but um, I usually am in with the 100s to 200s and between 80s and 90s. So, I should say 80 to 200s. But um, I'm very bold with my insulin, so I way overcorrect all the time. And it tends to do me well. Um... And then another thing only type 1 diabetics understand um, is the overwhelming idea of complications if you don't control your diabetes. So while I said that about extremists, yes, they're trying to prevent, but I know people who have great control and they still get complications. Um, so that's something only diabetics can understand is the overwhelming sense of, you know, if I don't get this crap under control, I could lose my vision, I could get amputation, um, heart stuff, kidney, whatever goes along with it. I know personally me, I have diabetic retinopathy. Um, that's a combination of 
me not caring about my diabetes for an extended period of time and just the longevity of 17 years of diabetes. Um, and I have mild, they're not concerned about it yet. Um, but when they are, obviously I'll get eye injections or whatever um, to help prevent or slow down what's happening. Um, and yeah, it's scary, but it is what it is. Um, I have to go get my labs done. I haven't had them done in a while. I was supposed to have them done in the beginning of the year and I didn't. Um, so I need to get those done, but I have an endo appointment coming up in November. And then on top of the complications, diabetes is something that heavily weighs on diabetics, even the ones that are super in control, you know, you can tell it weighs on them heavily because they devote their lives to it. Um, it's going to be what you make it to be. You know, I live with it every day. I was the first one in my town in 15 or 17 years, maybe 20 years, to get diagnosed within the school system. And then after that, a bunch of people were diagnosed. You know, it's what you make it. I always have used it as a learning tool and a way to make myself grow. Um, I use it mainly to learn. Um, I think it's important to learn from it and use it as something to make you bloom more than grow. That's why I have Instagram. That's why I'm on Daily Diabetics. That's why I educate people and that's why I help fellow diabetics slash um, I have some older friends that have diabetes that aren't as advanced with their diabetes that I like to help them with. Um, the biggest thing to me though is having people that can understand. So having other diabetic friends um, is really important because they can understand the highs, the lows, um, the triumphs, the letdowns, the A1C checks, um, the painful finger pokes, the painful injections, the painful pump sites, when you get scared to do a pump site, when you get scared to do an injection, when you get scared to put your Dexcom or Libre on or your Medtronic sensor or any other sensors. Um, or if you're going in for an eye check or whatever, you know, it's important to have someone that you can relate to, but it's also important to have people that are willing to learn and understand. Um, so with that being said, it's important to have a whole network of a support system and friends. Um, but with that being said, that is all that's on my list. And I hope y'all enjoyed today's lengthy video, which I'm surprised at, but um, I really took the time to think about this. Um, so, see y'all next week. <laughs>